So the next thing I want to discuss is how effects research used the notion of emotions to move on from the period that Malin talked about. And I highlighted Anne Barch's work on uses and gratifications because it demonstrates a number of things. Um, the first thing um, that it demonstrates is that um, there's nothing particularly, there's nothing necessarily wrong with doing experiments with showing people a media stimulus and then asking how they react to that. As long as you place those reactions in a social setting. Um, and the other thing is that the sort of interesting about Barch's work is that you see that it's perfectly possible to ask about positive emotional engagements with the media. So the one of the problems um, with earlier engagements with emotions was this idea that a lot of researchers, um, driven on by um, public concerns quite often, tended to view emotional reactions to media content um, a, a, in, in a way that kind of associated um, those emotions with a kind of an excess, excessive nervous energy that couldn't be managed. But of course, there are many ways in which emotional engagements with media have a positive um, effect on us. They make us feel better about the world and about the people around us. And that's what Anne Barch is doing in her research, which is studying the question of how emotional engagement with media changes over the course of a lifetime. In particular, she's good at um, identifying a particular kind of emotional media engagement, which is, she terms here eudaimonic entertainment. And this is an experience which she characterizes as belonging to typic typified of, of older uh, media audiences, where media audiences um, quite often enjoy or seek out media, uh, media content that um, engages quite complex emotions um, uh, where people will watch shows that make them feel quite comforted but make them think deeply about life at the same time and allow them to play around with mixed feelings. So say, for example, you know, you might have a, a bittersweet romance, you know, a romance where you know, the main character dies at the end, um, something like that. And, you, you know, and it allows you to think about, well, that's really sad and I'm feel I'm really unhappy now, but it was a really nice relationship. And so at least that's something to, to feel good about. Or if you're watching an action adventure movie and the main character is an anti-hero, that is someone who has many good uh, qualities, but also, you know, there's many parts of his personality or her personality that aren't too attractive. And the argument is, is the, uh, or what Barch wanted to look at was the question of, well, as we grow older, um, is it true to say that we seek out those more complex emotional engagements, which aren't about feeling one particular thing, but um, feeling a range of different emotions and kind of learning to regulate those emotions through our engagements with the media. So this is a really interesting approach to um, the topic of emotions in the media. Um, and it's also something that relates to Malin's piece because it shows how uses and gratifications developed from the early limitations of the 1930s and 1940s. It also tells us what, that there's nothing wrong with quantitative methods that use experiments. Um, it, and it's, it's just really a question of understanding how those methods belong to a fully sociological understanding of the media. So why am I asking you to read this? Well, as I just said, it's a recent example of experimental quantitative effects using use and gratifications theory, um, but it's quite different from the sorts of uh, studies that Malin was criticizing. Um, but I guess the first thing is, is that it approaches entertainment. When I say it approaches entertainment as a concept, what I mean is that it's not treating entertainment as a kind of, uh, as a, it's replacing the idea of information and stimulus with the idea of entertainment as uh, as an idea, as a kind of a cultural category that people use. So it isn't a question of um uh, the media kind of injecting an influence into the audience. It's a question of the media seeking, uh, the, the, of audiences going to the media 
um, already knowing that they prefer a certain type of experience. So the audience is, is, is in some ways um, um, a kind of a contributor to any kind of media influence that, that emerges. The other really important thing is that it's an example of um, use and gratifications research um, that approaches people as cultural beings, as people with social experiences. One of the criticisms of early uses and gratifications research was that it tended to uh, treat people as these kind of bundles of psychological traits that are easy to manipulate either uh, by people or by the media. So you didn't look at in, in a lot of early uh, use and gratifications research, there was there were efforts to locate particular kinds of drives. So people who were high in sensation seeking, for example, um, and you tended to kind of look at people and then disaggregate them into particular kinds of psychological traits and seeing which ones you could manipulate to produce a certain end. Um, Barch doesn't do that. She treats people as people, as with social experiences and histories. Um, the other thing I really, really like about Barch's uh, research and something that you need to do too is that you, if you read the research, you see, you read her work, you see how she derives a particular question from a carefully from a careful reading of the literature okay so the question of do older uh, media audiences seek different types of emotional engagements with um, uh, with media content is uh, something that's connected to two things firstly it's connected to um, a, a reading of evidence which suggests that our emotional engagements and the way that we seek out particular kinds of emotional engagements change over a period of time. But the second thing is it's connected, the question is connected to a very clear social need. So let's think about what that social need is. Well, I suppose one of the things um, that's notable about Barch um, is that her her question, her question of whether uh, older adults prefer different types of emo uh, of entertainment content that engages um, a range of complex emotional needs. This is something which is really important to society because what Barch is basically suggesting is that there's a real social value to entertainment. That entertainment is not just about allowing people to escape and feel better or whatever it is for a very short period of time, but it's actually something that allows people not only to experience um, uh, uh, emotional engagements which are somehow pleasurable, but also it's something that allows people to think about where they fit into society. So older adults, the argument is, need complex um, uh, uh, entertainment um, in order to keep them socially engaged with issues that matter. Now, the reason why I think this is very important is it demonstrates how we can connect media research to social needs. What Barch is saying is that entertainment has a social value. And that if media industries want to be socially responsible, they need to think about two things. Firstly, they need to think about the social importance of engaging audiences on an emotional level. And secondly, they need to think about the changing emotional needs of their audiences. And somehow they have to bear that in mind when, when producing the kinds of content that they produce. So the idea here is that we're thinking more about the social responsibility of the media and how media can build that social responsibility into their production practices. And the big idea I want to suggest here is that, is that what is suggested here is that we are, media research is there to help media serve, not sell. So if you look, for example, at contemporary debates around, I guess, something like um, Killing Eve on SBS, um, 
Killing Eve is a source of considerable pleasure for many audiences, but the idea is also that Killing Eve also has some social value. It's helping audiences think about the complexities of life. It is the sort of content that Barch says older audiences appreciate. Because it doesn't approach questions of good and evil in black and white terms, it allows audiences to, to, to think about the gray areas between what's good and what's bad, what people should do and what they shouldn't do. And this type of entertainment isn't only enjoyable, but it's also engaging on a social level. It's something which allows audiences to think about broader social topics that really matter to society. So just summarizing again, what we have here is the idea that Anne Barch's uh, work um, talks about how we can relate the issue of emotional pleasure to the social responsibility of the media. <laughs>